Welcome everyone, Bender here with our fifth Flash programming tutorial. In our last tutorial, we covered over functions and a small bit on them, but I would just like for right now, just real quick, just like to add onto the function. As you can see, I added an extra parameter here called callback, and that is of type function. Now, if you noticed, um, tell me story, instead of having tell me a story now in here, it now says callback. And when we call the say something function, you see, tell me a story is in there. Well, that's how you would call, that's how you would use a function as a parameter in a function. So let's just say after everything was done, I then after this is done to immediately do this function. So that's what we do. And any parameters that you would pass, as you see, when we call say something, we don't put any parentheses. That's how you call a function within a function. They're otherwise known as callback functions. Uh, but as you can see, I just say, it just says, tell me a story. So we don't, we didn't put any parentheses. The parentheses and the parameters of this function is covered whenever it's called in this function. So for instance, let's say, tell me a story needs one parameter and we'll just call it, mm, We'll just say our name actually so there isn't any confusion we'll just actually call it name one and we'll make it of type string so now let's just add to the end of this string just say plus name one okay so now this function now needs a string so what we do is in the function that calls this function that's where we input our string so we can put our name in there and if we go ahead and test it says hello bender your age is 20 you are five feet tall and i shall not tell you a story bender so that's how you would call a function or use a function as a parameter versus having to manually type in this if you want to make the function more universal so moreover so okay so now we can go ahead and get rid of this and get on to our actual lesson loops there are different types of loops and there's different ways to get through them so this is going to be a multi-part tutorial so the first one is about your basic for loop and to do that you simply type for and then we need an initial variable so let's just make it i we uh, let's set it equal to zero and the condition is what's next, as you can see, Flash is telling us. So, what would it, what it, this is a for loop will test this condition, and if this condition will, is true, it will run the code within the loop until that condition is met. So let's just say i is less than ten. So as long as our i variable is less than ten, the code inside will run, and the next is what will be ran afterwards generally you want this to increment your uh your counter variable which ours is i so if we just do i plus plus now you could do i plus equals one or plus equals five that way you can kind of control how it, it works but generally most people do plus plus like if you want to cycle through an array which we will go which we will go over later in uh, later tutorials. So after that you close it and then you just add your curly braces. Now whatever code is in here will be ran 10 times or as many times as our condition can be met. So if we do trace uh, we'll just say i equals concatenate it by adding a plus i. Now keep in mind that this i again like we talk about scopes earlier in the series, um, this i is also scoped into this for loop. Granted, yes, you can use, the, but the difference with this and a function is that you can use an outside va variables. Like so, we can set counter equals zero, and then we can do counter. But first, I'm just going to show you that i will work, and then we'll uh, I'll show you counter. So if we go ahead and test our movie, as you can see, we got i equals zero, one, two, three, all the way up until nine. But if you notice, it stopped at nine and it never went on to 10. Well, that's because 
once I was, let's just go from 8. So when i equals 8, is 8 less than 10? Yes. Run this code. Increment i. So now i is equal to 9. Is 9 less than 10? Yes, it is. So run this code and increment i. Um, which will make it 10. Now is 10 less than 10? No. So it will not run this, it will not increment, and it will move on. If we wanted to make it to where it also counts 10, we set to less than or equal to. You can also do greater than or equal to. Again, I, I believe I discussed this in an earlier tutorial. But when testing variables with ifs and stuff, you can type in the equals. And it will also check if it is less or equal or greater than or equal. So if we go ahead and test now, you see now it does output 10 because when i equals 9, it traced and then added, so i equals 10. Is 10 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. So trace, increment, but then it's 11 less than or equal to 10. No, so it skips the code. So that is a for loop. Oh, and let me go over the counter. What's, what's iffy about the counter is that you can't just type in, or I believe you can't just type in, counter. Let's see if you can, actually. Uh, nope, I think I'm getting an error. Yep, I got an error. I will be right back. All right, so I figured out the problem. What it was is that even though I was actually wrong, you even though you can state it outside and then also use it, which will reset the variable, it still must be initiated. Because what happened was, since I just left it like that, I'm not going to test it because it will crash flash again. But counter was equal to NAN which stands for not a number. And since not a number is technically less than 10, it was doing an infinite loop and it crashed flash. So the scope for the variable in a for loop is just like a function. It can only be, well, it can only be set from in the for loop. You can create it outside and then once you use it again, for instance, if we do trace counter, we should get 11. Yes. So you can make it, you can start the variable, you can use an outside variable if you want to keep track of where the for loop was, but you, can, but you must always set it equal to the number. Now, a way to get around this is you can always do counter equals counter. If we test that, we get the same deal. So, uh, but it has to be set to equal something within the for loop. Has to be. So the next one is a, I had to, sorry for typing it out there, getting ahead of myself. Oh, let's go ahead and delete you. Okay. So the next one is called a do while loop. And the difference between a do while and a for is that a do will always run at least once regardless if the condition can't be met. So for instance, let me just write a for loop again. Let's just say int i, oh, whoops, writing in other languages confuses me. Let's just say for i equals, uh, let's say five, i is less than five, i plus plus, trace i. Now, if you notice, when we test this, we don't get anything. So to do a do while loop, you say do bracket, closing bracket, and then our code. So, but this one does, a do does require an outside variable. So counter equals zero. So do trace counter. Or actually, it do yes, and then you do while, and then the condition. So while counter is less than five. So let's go ahead and actually uh, just to prove that it works, just like it will keep it to zero. And you always want to increment it that way the loop doesn't go infinitely. If we test our movie, we see we get one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Thank you, best. 
but as you can see, you know, it ran our code five times, but if we go ahead and set it to five and test our movie, you see it ran, even though technically we're getting the, let's switch that around. I knew it was looking funky. There we go. So if we test it, you see we get five, even though it was, even though counter was greater than five, or was actually equal, not, okay. Even though counter was not less than five, a do while loop will, like I said, always at least run it once because it reads it top to bottom. So do trace and then it increments counter while counter is less than five. So if, if, so let's go ahead and do four and, or let's just use that as an example. So if counter equals four, it will trace four, it will make it five and then it will then it will check mm, okay I'm not explaining it the best uh, do whiles I've always been a little confusing but just keep just keep in mind it always runs the code inside the do loop at least once so um, so I think that's it for the basics on loops so in our next tutorial we'll go over probably slightly more advanced I'll probably go into arrays, that way we can get into more advanced. So actually, yes, that will be the next one. Our next tutorial will be about arrays, or at least the basic properties of arrays. So, this has been Bender, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial.